the moons were new on the night of the greatest heist in history. The shadows emerged from their isolated corners to claim the slumbering city. A lone Khajiit lurked over Senchal, legs and tail dangling from the roof of the tavern like umbrous vines, darker even than this moonless night. His fur was black as Namira's great darkness. The Khajiit was a shadow within the shadow, a shade more tenebrous than the spectrum of Azura's twilight could possibly produce on Nern. There was no prize in all Tamriel that this Khajiit could not steal effortlessly. He could have lifted the Amulet of Kings from the Emperor's throat, or the spear from Vivek's back. He could have infiltrated the Thieves' Guild and taught the Grey Fox the nebulous secret of true anonymity. Why wear a mask when your very face is midnight? The Khajiit heard the unmistakable, almost imperceptible sound of a cosmic shift. A rent had opened in the gloom, so subtle that it bypassed the lunar lattice, the sacred barrier between Mundus and Oblivion. The rift beckoned him. The cat, curious as all cats are, leapt from his perch and stalked toward the disturbance. His whiskers guided him along the path. He noticed the nocturnal strands guiding him toward the subtle shimmering of the stars. One star shot by the Khajiit, and his instincts almost made him swat at it. Amid the stars, something was askew, like a constellation that had no place on this cosmic canvas. The cat's intuition was sound, because there was something otherworldly hiding in plain sight. It was a realm of spun silver, artifice to look like a segment of the night sky. But this cat was too savvy by far, and to his keen eyes, the realm appeared like a patch of cloth stitched into a torn sail. The Khajiit crept up to this concealed realm, and he heard silky voices arguing. Three Daedric princes, garbed in shadows, each claiming dominion of the night. The Khajiit drew closer, stepping along the web where the light had not been caught, and listened to their debate. As he crept unnoticed, the clever cat planned a heist. And this heist would be the first chapter in the legend of his apotheosis. For this black cat would become a god, and tales of his exploits would spread all over the world, inspiring burglars and crooks in every corner of Tamriel. This is the story of Rajin, the god of thieves. In order to learn about Rajin, the tricky cat, I left my study and immersed myself in Khajiiti culture. I sat by their campfires and listened to tales of the bandit god of a thousand faces, Bandar, and of the laughing lion, Kunzari. I ate fish, excessively garnished with moon sugar that made my head swim, but most profound of all, to me, was sleeping outside, beneath a blanket of stars. This is the greatest culture shock of all, how strange it is that the sky, which by day is a stationary ground on which the clouds are seen to move, by night becomes the backdrop for Nern's own motion, so that we feel her rolling beneath us as a sailor feels the running of the tide. That night, the sense of this slow turning was so strong that I was almost giddy with its long, continued sweep. Strong too was the feeling that the sky was a bottomless pit, into which the universe might drop forever. I had heard people say that when they looked at the stars too long, they grew terrified by the sensation of being drawn away. My own fear was of the yawning void, and at times I grew so frightened that I gripped the grass beneath my fingers, for it seemed to me that I must fall off Nern and into that midnight abyss. No doubt every man in Myrrh feels some touch of this, since it is said that there exists no climate so mild that people will consent to sleep in unroofed houses. This is where the catfolk diverge so drastically. The Khajiit sleep soundly under the stars, and it is no wonder to me that their spirituality is so inextricably intertwined with the moons and with the stars. The sixteen kingdoms of elsewhere were unified under the Riddlefar Epiphany in the early Second Era, which led the cats to structure their society based on the bilunar shadow, dividing power in accordance with the two moons and their dance across the sky. Eventually, elsewhere was consolidated into only two kingdoms, but the importance of the cosmos to their religion did not diminish. The Khajiit believed they were an offshoot of the elves, created by Azura with the specific skill set required to climb the lunar lattice, and restore the moons to their natural cycles in times of great need. The cats believe that life is a spiritual journey, along a path to the heavens. 
They must avoid temptation and corruption along this path if they are to make it to their afterlife, known as the sands behind the stars, where the dunes are made of sugar and every cat will experience warmth without end. Rajin is the god of thieves and no one is more familiar with the night than a thief. While the common folk sleep, thieves work and the star-speckled sky was the backdrop to all of Rajin's greatest deeds. Rajin's path to godhood began amid the stars, when he stumbled upon the secret conversation of the Daedra Lords. To the Khajiit, there is no distinction between Aedra and Daedra, so Rajin merely witnessed three spirits locked in debate. This cat was more than just sneaky, he also possessed a silver tongue, which he turned upon the princes. He waited patiently, quietly, as the princes talked in circles, learning all he could. Then, when the time was right, he stepped out from the shadows and announced himself. Rajin said, this one knows the night like no other. He would be honored to choose. The gathered Daedra lords regarded the thief coolly. There was the spinner Mafala, the goddess of twilight and matron of the catfolk Azura. And the last of the lords has actually never been named in any retelling of these events. This mysterious last prince is up for speculation. Could it be Noctra, the Shadow Queen, or perhaps Namira, the eldest spirit, the Great Darkness? Based on Khajiiti mythology, I would say that it wasn't Namira. Unlike her depiction in more widespread religions, the cat seen Namira as more of an ancient, eldritch force, and even Rajin would surely have been daunted by her presence. Fortunately for Rajin, his brazenness was rewarded. Azura saw he was one of her chosen children, and so she told her companions not to strike down the cat for his impertinence. Rajin flattered the princes. He fed Azura's vanity and piqued the spider's curiosity. But all the while he had his keen feline eyes on only one thing, the ring upon Mafala's eighth arm. Mafala is the prince of lies and flattery and seduction, yet she had fallen for these very tricks as employed by Rajin's silver tongue. The Khajiit embraced Mafala, and she took him into her silken bed. The thief deftly ran his hands about her, purring into her ear, until his fingers touched upon his prize, the ring of Khajiiti. Trapped in the throes of ecstasy, the spider didn't even notice as Rajin slipped the relic from her arm. The umbral magics woven into the band caused it to shrink in his palm, adopting the perfect size to fit his finger. Rajin slid the ring on and vanished. The purring liar skulked away, silent and quick, and by the time Mafala opened her eyes, her lover was gone. This mortal cat had stolen a Daedric artifact from a dangerous prince, a crime worthy of an eternity of torment in the spiral skein, yet he was not satisfied. On his way out, Rajin spied the killing word of the spider, the black edge of shadow, displayed upon the mantle. The invisible cat swiped it and placed it on his back. Dark and sharp was the spinner's fury, but Rajin was no longer there. He was retracing his steps down the twilight strands, back to the familiar shady slums of Senshal, where he could disappear among the alleys and awnings of the market district. With these Daedric artifacts in his deft hands, Rajin's audacity knew no bounds. The Khajiit have always made the best footpads, and the purring liar was greatest among them. And as with all thieves, the thrill of the heist, the mortal danger of being caught in the act, was a drug far more potent than moon sugar. He had the ring which enhanced his stealth, and the blade which protected him from his enemies. And soon he decided it was time for an even greater heist. Stealing from Mafala was quite the feat, given her propensity for deceit. But Rajin's next victim was a far more perceptive prince. And I mean that in a literal sense, for his innumerable eyes are ever watchful. Rajin knew how to infiltrate Mafala's web, so he returned to the scene of the crime, donned his ring, and followed her threads to the home of her sibling, to a realm where all trees are fallen. Rajin delved into the leather-bound labyrinth of Hermora. He crossed seas of undulating ink, where roiling tentacles groped at his nebulous form, sensing his presence despite the shroud of sorcery provided by the ring. He passed through the archipelagos of Apocrypha, where seekers watch from parchment isles, no doubt sending reports to the cephalopod god. Rajin smirked, for he would be a memory on the wind by the time word reached the Demon of Knowledge. The tricky cat made anchorage at a secluded island, at the very edge of the abyssal library. 
Most mortals would have lost their minds before reaching such a remote corner of the realm, for the weight of all that hidden wisdom would have torn their minds asunder. But Rajin was unfazed, for he hadn't come with an open mind. He had come for one purpose, and if he was completely honest with himself, he couldn't say why he actually desired it, other than the joy of taking it. Homura knows all, yet Homura did not know that a lowly Khajiit was on the verge of stealing his most hallowed artifact. Upon a plinth, utterly unguarded, sat the Ogma Infinium, a tome of infinite power. Rajin pillaged the book that knows from the one who knows it all, and disappeared amongst sheaves in the wind. And the purring lyre purred louder than ever at the thought of Homura endlessly searching and scrying for his lost relic. These two legendary heists ensured that Rajin, while remaining an elusive enigma, would forever live in Khajiit folklore, and there are countless stories of his deeds. Tales of his triumph spread not only across Tamriel, but also across Oblivion, and it is said that one evening, the Lord of Revelry, Sangin, sought out the Cat King of Thieves and challenged him to a drinking contest. Sangin the Blood Cat has quite the reputation in Elsewhere, He's not a malevolent spirit, but all wise Khajiit know that to follow Sangin too closely means to stray from the starbound path. In small doses though, Sangin brings delight and a pleasant distraction from the woes of mortal existence. Perhaps his greatest gift was wine, for it is said all over elsewhere that Sangin spilled the blood of the grapes. So, when the blood cat manifested in the flesh in a raucous tavern at the heart of Senchal, immense quantities of grape blood flowed. The cat folk selected their champion. Who better than the tricky cat to undertake the challenge? Rajin had outwitted two princes already, and he knew well the path to heaven. So how could he possibly be lured from it? Clay cups, brimming with red nectar, covered the table like arrayed armies. And with a boisterous cheer, the contest commenced. It was a clash of titans, and one by one, the clay soldiers had their lifeblood drained by the two gods that loomed over them. Sangin and Rajin drank themselves into oblivion, and in the context of the Elder Scrolls, I should give the disclaimer that I don't mean that literally. A drunken stupor gripped both contenders, and so strong it was that the victor of this mighty duel has never actually been revealed anywhere in Khajiiti folklore. Perhaps there is no consensus on which god outlasted the other. Perhaps they both collapsed into inebriated hibernation side by side simultaneously. Or perhaps, like the best and the worst nights of excessive drinking, the cats were wise enough to forget everything that occurred after midnight. Rajin endeared himself to gods and mortals alike, and these are but a few of his tremendous tricks and fascinating feats. His escapades among the living were no less exceptional. It is said that Rajin once trespassed into the Imperial Palace, crept into the heavily guarded bedchamber of Empress Kintyra, and proceeded to steal the tattoo from her neck. Ever since his first theft, Rajin relied on the ethereal power of the Ring of Khajiiti to carry out his exploits. But it is said that the footpad's life came to a premature end. The tricky cat had made so many enemies over the years that it was only a matter of time before a rival got the better of him. And as the text titled, The Thief God's Treasures states, Eventually, Rajin took too much, too often that the Ring of Khajiit tired of his capers. They say that the Ring abandoned Rajin as he was surrounded by enemies, and that it was his undoing. But killing Rajin in the flesh was meaningless at this point, for Rajin had ascended to become the god of thieves, and his shadows remain in the tangible world, constantly embroiled in some kind of mischief. So keep a vigilant eye on the dark recesses of the city, for Rajin's eternal spirit may just be watching. But before we close the book on Rajin's illustrious life, I want to pose the question, how did he become a god? The answer to this could be, and is most likely rather simple. Belief is powerful in the Orbis. The potency of the gods wax and wane based on the worship of mortals. Some gods fall out of favour, others endure in folklore forever. Rajin will always be a cultural god to the Khajiit, because the cat folk will never tire of spinning stories of his exploits. But is it possible that Rajin achieved apotheosis in a literal sense too? The Thief God's Treasures claims that, with the Ring of Khajiit, Rajin grasped the spark of godhood. It wrapped him in shadow so dark that none could reach him, not the anticipation of Vivek, not even the passage of time. Shadow magic is a seldom studied concept on Tamriel, 
Even in the libraries of the Imperial City and the Winterhold Arcanium, it is hard to find information on it. So I bade farewell to my Khajiit friends, and ventured once more into Apocrypha, in search of forbidden knowledge. And within I found two obscure scrolls, called the Scrolls of Shadow, detailing the discoveries of a Shadow Mage named Azra Nightwielder. The first scroll says, Shadows are not a mere absence of light, but a reflection of possible worlds, created by forces in conflict. A light strikes a rock, and the shadow is a record of their clash, past, present and future. Throughout my years studying the gods of the orbits, I have always used the following metaphor to describe the interplay of the primeval gods Anu and Padamai. Anu is the everlasting, ineffable light, and Padamai is the corrupting, inexpressible action. The former is the primordial force of stasis and order, the latter is the primordial force of chaos and change. First there was Anu, and without Padamai there was no conflict. There was nothing to prevent Anu's brightness from filling every part of the universe. So that Anu might better understand itself, the god of stasis needed some kind of resistance. It needed limitation. Padamai provided the obstacles that could block out some of Anu's all-encompassing radiance. And what happens when light hits an obstacle? Shadows. These shadows provided the variance that is essential for nuance and complexity. From here, the entire Orbis was able to realize its potential. And here we are. With this in mind, we can see the true power of shadow magic. The second scroll of shadow goes on to say, Azra attempted what had never been done before, manipulating his own shadow to such an extent that he instantiated and melded all possible Azras at the same time, crossing over from this singular existence to all the existences in shadow. So what does this mean for Rajin? Well, the Ring of Khajiit is a Daedric artifact that can defy the laws of nature, making its wearer invisible and silent. And if the Thief God's treasures is to be believed, it can shroud you in shadows so dark that you are impervious to the passage of time. It is no coincidence that this ring is not only associated with Mafala, but also with Meridia. Meridia was once a child of Magnus, only she was cast out by the Aedra and the Magnagi. The text titled Exegesis of Meridnunda describes Meridia's journey to oblivion and the creation of her realm. It says, Meridnunda formed of her substance a great drag lens, and the light of Magnus was bent thereby. The rays carved, focused a new sphere from the chaos, which Meridnunda, laughing, sparkling, did claim for her own. Meridia bent the divine light of Aetherius to create her plane of oblivion, and the text goes on to say, Thus does Meridnunda ride, slide across the rainbow road from end to end, and at one end stretching the dragon, at the other end compressing him. The scholar who wrote this text added his own interpretation of this excerpt, stating, The dragon, of course, traditionally refers to the divine we know as Akatosh, the god of time. This seems to suggest that by travelling the rainbow road, a reference to the prismatic refraction of light, Meridia can, in some sense, alter the rate at which time flows forward. Forgive me for bombarding you with sources, but it is quite possible that the Ring of Khajiiti does more than cast an invisibility spell and muffle your footsteps. Any enchanter can imbue a ring with these properties. It seems to me that the Ring of Khajiiti employs the power of shadows to alter the physical reality of the wearer. By garbing Rajin in shadow so dark, the trickster cat bypassed the physical limits of mortality. It's practically impossible to determine how long Rajin lived, and which feats he carried out as a mortal Khajiit, versus those he carried out as a shadow. If he did truly die, it was predicated on the Ring of Khajiiti abandoning him before his enemies. The possibilities of shadow magic raise a lot of questions that we can tackle in future videos. But for now, I think it's fitting to leave Rajin with some semblance of secrecy. Despite being a cultural god of the cat folk, Rajin remains an enigma. And there's no doubt that this makes the god of thieves purr with pride. And there you have it guys, the story of Rajin, the cat that fooled the Daedric princes and stole godhood in the process. I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you so much for watching. Links to my Discord and social media can be found in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can also find a link to my Patreon. But please, only consider pledging if you can afford it. Watching and enjoying the content is more than enough support. 
Thanks again. My name is Drew the Daedrologist. You've been watching Drew Mora, and I'll see you in the next one.